Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to Thought Behind Things. Today's um, episode, we have a very interesting guest lineup. Uh, you've probably seen the Syrian guys, um, you know, Shawarma story that was extremely crazy viral a couple of years a couple of years ago. I, I think it was a, earlier this year. Like, uh, yeah, two years back. Two years two back years and started. last year, like, in F10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it, it, it went crazy viral and, you know, all over Pakistan people were watching it and we wanted to try your 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 shawarmas um so yeah so we have the Syrian guys here with us uh, you two are brothers almost life brothers life brothers so you're like best friends more than yeah. that <laughs> very cool um so i want to start off with a little bit understanding of and this is what fascinates me the most because we don't as as pakistanis we don't see Pakistan is one of the countries that people would choose if they have like an entire world atlas, right? And this is this is where we should go, uh, you know, in yeah. search for opportunity or in search for anything else. So what made you guys move to Pakistan? Honest answers. Yeah, honest answers. <laughs> you go. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Uh, for me, it was like, you can say Allah sent me here. Okay. I tried to go other places. Right. It was all shut mm -hmm. just because I'm Syrian. Just because of the Syrian nationality, really, doors were shut. And you came here during uh, once the war started. Yeah, like a year, a year after that. Okay. Uh, I got a scholarship to UET Lahore. Right. And uh, that's how I reached the country. Very cool. New <laughs> world, new experience, yeah. <laughs> but it was amazing. And did you graduate from UET? No. Uh, after that, we shifted to Islamabad. A year, year after that, shifted to Islamabad, and uh, we started online courses, uh, online diplomas in business, cooking, programming, different skills. And you were here just alone or with your family? Alone, alone with Haytham. You both came together. Yes. No, no. Like uh, he came uh, almost six months before me, or two months. To Islamabad. To Islamabad, oh. and after that, I uh, I followed him here. And since then we are together. Since then you're together. And and, and so uh, the first time that you came to Pakistan was around six months after he came. Uh, I don't no. think so. No, no, no two a months. Month. A One month, month before him. Yeah. And uh, then I shifted to Islam about six months. Right. And you came to UET as well, or you came here for something no, else? My, my scholarship was uh, to uh, University of Lahore. Right. But unfortunately, the admission I got was fake. Fortunately. <laughs> well, at the beginning it was like that so you basically applied online and basically somebody fooled you uh, no actually the, the the guy who was in charge of uh, admissions he is the one who fooled me not me not only me after the uh, after i reached the country here he fooled 15 guys after me really yeah. and he was actually working at the university yeah yeah he's still working at the university no after that accident, he like he left the university with the cash, and he ran away. And he took all, all of that cash from you guys? Uh, not from me, from the other 15 guys. And basically what he said was, you're getting an admission when the university had no idea about it? Yeah. Wow. So, like, I wasted one year just yeah. looking here and there and trying to get admission. Then I said, like, let's go to Islamabad. Right. I contacted Hussam and Alhamdulillah. Since then, we are together, like living one life. Yeah. Two person, one life. What about the 15 other? Have they all left the country? Yeah. Right. Like, uh, they came here just to continue their studies. They were like two years away from graduating. But uh, life. Yeah. That's life. And this was, what, what year was this? In 2013. 2013. So you've been in the country for almost eight years. Can you understand a bit of Urdu now? A little bit, but I can't speak. You can't speak, but no. you can understand. You can at least yeah, tell yeah. What, when two people are talking about something. Uh, like I can talk basics. Right, right, and right. The same case with him. Oh. Right, right, right. Very nice. And when when did you start the Syrian shawarma situation in Islamabad? Uh, we started in 2016. Lahore. In Lahore. Oh. We were yes. dealing with uh, foreigner uh, hostel. Mm -hmm. It was like almost Arabs. So we tried uh, our first shawarma there, and alhamdulillah, after uh, we got the uh, results, we said let's go to Islamabad, and we went to Karachi G9, company, yeah. G9, after that we moved to F10, mm -hmm. and in F10 we got our peak, alhamdulillah. 
right but then i saw that you guys left f10 and you mm. i think were going to f7 at the time yes and that didn't work out i think maybe because of covid yeah exactly uh, when the market closed we didn't have enough backup capital to like to support the property right and the lockdown understandably yeah but i also saw that the the the, the location that you had in f10 uh, and i mm. think your your shawarma was called the syrian guys the syrian guys and there is still a syrian guys over there syrian shawarma syrian shawarma or some, something like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i don't see any syrians there well uh, to be honest there is one okay uh, so there is a syrian, syrian <laughs> there is one who was working with <coughs> us <coughs> sorry he was working with us uh, since we were in uh, g9 mm-hmm. karachi company he was making the sweets right and uh, later on like after we uh, after a while in after and he decided that he wants to open his own place right yeah and uh, back then we had uh, paper things visas uh, we were doing our visa we couldn't stay there right so uh, since we were like paying rent to jalrez kitchen right we thought we shouldn't just leave suddenly we asked adnan to to be there for a while right and yeah after that we rejoined three months later mm-hmm. so there was two searing guys and the other right a lot of confusion yeah a lot a lot a lot of confusion and in a very short while it was too small to handle three restaurants there right we decided to leave yeah that's the thing it's simply as simple as that yeah it's it's a, it's a little bit disappointing when you know you've worked so hard on something and then something like this happens but i feel like yeah. it, when people the people who generally have the vision and the idea even if you go and you go to a new location inshallah it'll work definitely work out inshallah. better of course inshallah. of course if you're not depending uh, like if it's really your idea if it's mm. for example in food if it's your recipes if it's uh, your management wherever you go it will happen especially nowadays with the social media the marketing I don't think physical location can limit you. Yeah. That's true. Especially nowadays. And uh where are you guys opening the the new store now? I heard it's opening in the in the first week of October, right? Inshallah, Inshallah. it will be in uh, F7 Markaz. Mhm. Uh beneath uh, Jessie's. Right. Oh, that's a very prime location. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. The, it's a very good location and we are preparing a very good sitting area as well. Oh. It will be a first. So uh, yeah that we, was we that was going to be my next question because generally it's just, it's, it was more like a, you know come in take the shawarma and then leave yes yeah but uh, right now alhamdulillah it's legal to have a sitting area out uh, of the restaurant and uh, we are planning to have something good so it's going to be a full experience Inshallah. are you trying to build a syrian experience of sorts or is, is it more like a fast food place uh, for now it's only fast food it's only fast food Uh, it's a surprise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something, okay. something special for that. I look forward to it. Okay, I want to I want to sort of expand on you've been here in this country for 7 years and beyond the, you know, the hoopla and the wow, you know, Pakistan is great and because I saw a lot of media attention and I saw that obviously in a 15 second ticker the best thing is, you know, okay, great. It's a great country. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's a, every country in the world is a great country for the people who, you know, visit or live there. Um but there is always an experience that you someone coming from let's say abu dhabi and then syria to pakistan or you coming from syria and i'm not sure where you were before that i came directly from syria to pakistan direct, directly from syria so you lived in syria and you've you've experienced the people there and you've experienced the lifestyle over there so can you share a little bit about your experience in pakistan in terms of the people in terms of the infrastructure in terms of dealing with you know business dealing and so on well honestly for me uh i had no idea about pakistan before coming here right like even i didn't see any pictures or uh, videos or anything the only thing i knew about pakistan that they produce the best footballs and uh, surgical uh, tools yeah the moment i i reached the country here man like i was wow seriously like uh, and this was in you you reached lahore right yeah and all i see around me is green 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 everywhere <laughs> for me i love nature right so that's a plus point and syria is more uh, uh, more barren uh-huh. in that aspect greenery wise yeah mountains green yes that that's the whole theme 
like it's more more like a desert because i kind of yeah okay kind of right if uh, there is a big desert okay and damascus is like uh, nearly a desert right no it's yeah yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. can say that even the mountain in damascus is like a, a, a like a rocky sandy mountain right 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 qasyun uh, jabal qasyun uh but uh, still it's like half and half like half of syria is like greeny like muddy right you can say like very similar to muddy and uh, with the coast mm-hmm. for example my city latakia it's on the coast mm-hmm. plus it's like 30 minutes away from the mountain like muddy right yeah it's very I, I cool i really miss it so you can get the best <laughs> of both worlds amazing yeah. and uh, so okay we'll, we'll we'll get to syria in a bit um <laughs> so what was the experience? so you love the nature yeah yeah and uh, like in in every country you can find bad people mm-hmm. and good people right but the point is don't let bad people distract you from seeing the good right and uh, honestly i didn't feel that i am a stranger in this country seriously okay. i didn't feel that i am a stranger mm. even in lahore or here in islamabad i am part of this country and alhamdulillah people like treating me as a brother yeah even though there are some bad people but let's not talk about them man yeah <laughs> focus on the good they're that's everywhere cool. that's cool that's cool um and what about in terms of so what you were mentioning do you have family in syria no oh, yes of course my whole uh, family are in syria okay my mother is in abu dhabi right and are you in touch with that family or is it more oh, of yes. an extended family yeah yeah we are we are in touch okay not that much but yeah we are in touch what about you haitham well my family is in jordan mm-hmm. they are living in the refugee camp but the rest of my relatives some in jordan some in uh, syria and they are like sometimes contacting and like that but as long as my family are safe yeah that's all i care about yep. and how do how do what's the generally what's the process I, if if this is not too triggering or anything of that sort but what's the process of them leaving the refugee camp well the thing is they can leave the refugee camp they can live in uh, the cities but in syria or jordan uh, in jordan okay but the thing is like uh, they won't be under the un protection, protection right and uh, living in jordan it's very expensive right like very very expensive and like i'm planning to bring them here right uh, and um, like i'm hoping that my father will agree and um, but the thing is like if they uh, left jordan to something that it's not like 100% sure, stable yeah it's hard to get back to jordan because the moment you leave the country they will like stamp your passport for the next five years you are not allowed to enter jordan oh so you're not going to be considered a refugee anymore yeah right so you have to make sure that you're extremely stable here exactly to to make sure that they yeah. they can join you in, in in pakistan and what about syria like i uh, you know you read the news but these days it feels like the news is all over the place like every news channel has an agenda there is always one country who wants some one thing you know so what's the actual if you know anything from on ground what does it look like in syria now you want to talk about it it's not that easy first of all and uh, if you're following news yeah you don't get one analysis right yeah the thing is that agendas everywhere if yeah. you look on ground yeah people are suffering a lot war have ended everyone took his share of land resources whatever now the people are suffering and uh, that is not really shown in the news but yeah. what, what they show you is that where they want you to look yeah they want you to look at Aleppo they don't really like turkey they show that oh Aleppo is something uh, but actually everyone all the people the citizens of syria are suffering other than that no one is suffering the armies the militias they are living their life the citizens of syria they are the one who are suffering we are talking about water 
food, medicines. Suddenly, it's not available in Syria. And uh, the people who joined that war, they are responsible for that. Yeah. It, it is an international law. Like when you enter a war in a country, you are responsible for these things. You are responsible for the citizens of that country. Otherwise, don't go in it. Right? Yeah. No one really cares. No one cares and uh, they are trying to play on nationalism to cover that. Oh no, you shouldn't say that you need medicine. You shouldn't say that you need that. Oh, Syria, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think nowadays even uh, the international governments are uh, they are siding with the the Syrian government. Right. After all this war, now they are siding with it. So yeah. it's all for vain. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. So, I mean, w- before 2013 or whenever the war started, 12 or 13, right? Yeah, 11. 11. So before the war, was Syria a prosperous country? Like, it, was it something that, was it safe? Was it Heaven. prosperous? Heaven on earth. Seriously, like, if the war didn't happen in Syria, I don't think I will be leaving. Man, we were living, uh, how to tell you, simple life, everything is available. Everything. Everything. (laughs) Like, seriously. Fruits, veggies, uh, all all kind of food, restaurants, high-end, low-end, entertainment, culture, uh, safe. It was... Um, I don't know if there is any other country which was that stable. We had a region for production, a region for farming, a region for tourism. It was all completing. Like we are, we were completing each other. And uh, actually, the like our neighbor countries, man, every month, like uh, Damascus is filled with uh, Jordanian, Lebanese, Iraqian. They go to Syria, buy whatever they want, and go back to their countries. Like, at least they save more than half the price. Really? Yes. And because you guys were there uh, somewhere around the time the war started, obviously when we see it from the outside, it's more like, you know, okay, there are these rebels and they want to topple the government and... You know, the, the, the way that it's sold is that, you know, the, the country is in horrible conditions and they want to take the dictator out and then mm-hmm. there is ISIS and then there is so on and so forth. Uh, but when it was starting to, like, beginning to happen, what was it? Did it just randomly start? No. It looked on purpose. It was, like, very well engineered. Uh, very, very well. <laughs> very well. It was well. <laughs> planned in a way that no one can understand what's happening. Suddenly, everything is just falling Suddenly. apart. Like, uh, for six months, people, they were, like, demanding their rights. Normal yeah. rights. Yeah. And suddenly, it started, like, shooting, bombing. Everybody's killing Everywhere. everybody. No, to be exact, not rights like freedom or et cetera. No, no. It was one right that there was an officer who did an awful thing in a okay. city, in, in Tara city. And the people were demanding that he should be punished. Right. That was the only thing. And any sane government would have just did that. Yeah. It was a public sin, yeah. which needed a public... Yeah, uh, they, they, they needed closure for it, yeah. But instead... They uh, did not. They did not punish him, and they refused publicly to punish that officer. And directly they called us traitors. On the TV, the president himself... So the, so the government did escalate it then on some level. On purpose. Yeah. You know, on purpose. They knew that this will happen. They knew that this will extend. But yeah. But they were trying to like to control it for the last minute. But people can't hold it anymore. Yeah. They probably thought that, you know, they will crush this sort of resentment. And I think Arab Spring was happening a- a- across the Middle East at the time. Yeah. They wanted to make sure that, you know, if, if they punish this one officer, then the people will be like, you know, we want a better system. So they were worried about the Arab Spring and, and potential threat to, you know, the government. Somehow, yeah, yeah somehow. But uh, in the back, it wasn't like this. Well, uh, this government is like uh, in control of Syria for the last 50 years. The same family. Right. 
they are uh, considering Syria as a farm for right. themselves. They do whatever they want. They take whatever they want, and no one can question them. Yeah. If you open your mouth, you will be disappearing. No mm. one will know where are you. And that was like why people went out. Like we can't take it anymore. Yeah. I am not safe in my own country. Yeah. So how the hell I am supposed to live here? Yeah. And like one thing led to another, and and then when the fighting started, I think a lot of other players jumped in, and then there were a lot of global vested interests as well, and yes. then you know the ISIS thing o- happened, and um, well, everyone was like playing their cards, and everyone was supporting their uh, their uh, people in the country. Yeah. Starting from south till north. Yeah, and then like you said, like the only losers were the Syrian people. Of course. So, um, wow, <laughs> that's a lot to take. Um, but you know, that's that's behind you. Um, did you actually see any of the fighting going on while you were there, or were you able to avoid that? Well, uh, at the beginning in my city, yeah, um, not fighting. It was like uh, a strike, right? Uh, people gathering, shouting uh, their rights, and the army was like surrounding them around them and suddenly the fire started like on people and air like it doesn't matter just shoot wow and there were like at least at least 10,000 people so that would have been like god alone knows how many casualties and uh, alhamdulillah like uh, the injuries were around 30 to 50 right no one killed okay. alhamdulillah after that, man, it turned out as, how do I say it? Chaos. A chaos movie. Like, uh, every night they shut down the electricity at 3 a.m. And they start shooting, pumping. Randomly. Every and, and night. And this was your own government? Yeah. Every night. You yeah. e- Every night you have to listen to five bombs around the city. It doesn't matter where it. Like and which city was this? Uh, Dara, in the south. Is this a big city, like a proper, like Islamabad-sized uh-huh. city, or no? It's a whole region. Uh, this is the the farming region I was uh, okay. I mentioned before. So it was more like a district where a district. Hold on. Oh, oh yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay, so um, how do you see the Middle East? And I know I'm sorry I'm going towards this, but I've, I this is the first time I'm uh, meeting okay, anyone who's okay. Syrian, right? So. How do you see the what what's happening in the Middle East now? Um, do you think there is do you, do you finally get some hope now? In the past decade, there's been a lot of confusion, um, but we see now ISIS sort of going back. Uh, we see there is some form of control in Iraq. I don't know about Libya, mm-hmm. um, but at least you know even if Egypt is again back to a military uh, regime it's still somewhat stable. So do you see Middle East now going back to its normal, uh, you know, pre-war levels? Or do you think, again, with Lebanon, again, there is destabilization over there as well? And Do you know the history of the Middle East? I know in very general, in general. rudimentary. Generally, yeah. Uh, after the Ottoman Empire was controlling almost the whole region, yeah. Um, the, uh, the Western world, the European... Uh, uh, France, Britain, uh, the Italy. the the Zionist, they united. They were united against the Ottoman Empire to get it down. Right. And uh, after that, after the Ottoman Empire was removed from those districts, they started colonizing us. Huge wars, rebels, b- casualties from both sides. In the end, they decided that we're leaving. Okay. This is like very stupid move. Yeah. We should leave, give them the illusion of the independence. Oh, yeah. here you go. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> have like fun, enjoy randomly it. Randomly <laughs> cut lines and give people yeah. independence. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy it, get the the borders, get rents from those people, you know, tenants. Yeah. I think this is the normal state, decolonizing. And right now it will right now if you ask anyone, he will say I would prefer being controlled by France or Italy than to be controlled by our governments 
and this is what they want and i think that's what i saw in lebanon as well right after yes. the bomb blast right exactly. like uh, the fr- french president came in and come on yes yeah, yeah. and the entire public was like okay fine like <laughs> please take control yeah, of us yeah. because we can't no handle it no one would mind yeah no not even one citizen in the middle east yeah. would mind getting uh, like being a, a, a colonized again you know? but do you feel like that's they've, they've sort of gaslighted the the population in a way that now you you'd rather choose modern day slavery over your own self because they've they've basically destroyed the 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 idea of your own national identity so much it was a slavery yeah it, it is a slavery still right now no. yeah like uh, how do you know that you are a slave for yeah. example now i can't go back to syria because if i want to go back to syria i need to serve the government i need to serve as a citizen i'm a soldier yeah whatever orders i get yeah that is slavery yeah you don't have the freedom to choose right that is slavery whether they say it this is like uh, against israel or whatever man if it's freedom yeah. if i don't like to do something you cannot force me yeah right unless there is a war against us yeah an invader is coming okay of course everyone will protect his house at least yeah but uh, for 40 years to be a soldier doing their giving them tea uh to to protect you from israel that is bullshit <laughs> sorry for that <laughs> yeah 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 and uh, this is how it is everywhere and uh, as i said uh, they pushed the people of the middle east to choose them instead of being invaders now they will be liberating us a very bad story yeah <laughs> but this is how things goes and how uh, so there is that oil belt you know with the uae and saudi and qatar, qatar and uh kuwait mm-hmm. and then there is more of a technocratic side of the middle east right with egypt and uh, syria where people are more you know the, the labor force is stronger the people are more educated people yes. are more uh, imp- i wouldn't say empowered again uh, as as you mentioned but mm. you know there's turkey or at least i mean i wouldn't consider turkey to be part of the middle east i would say not really yeah, yeah but uh, w- lebanon um syria jordan and egypt these countries were never really dependent on oil no they were more dependent on brain yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no. so how do you differentiate between these two sort sort of sides of the middle east because for pakistan and you've probably seen talk to a lot of pakistanis we've never really i mean we we go we jump to uae like that's mm-hmm. no big deal um there's a ton of us in even saudi or qatar or kuwait um but we've never really gone to egypt or 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 syria or lebanon so we don't really have an understanding of how can you how, what what the what's the difference between cultures what's the difference between economy you know between both of those well the thing is when you are talking about uh, gulf area yeah you are only talking about money yeah and oil yeah that's their power nothing else no brains no people so they needed um uh, if um, what i'm going to say will be like in a right uh, in a right uh, way but they needed uh, laborers right teachers builders engineers doctors in every aspect of the society and mm. everything like our fathers our grandfathers they built their countries right and in the end you got nothing yeah you, you have to nothing. go back you can't even get the nationality right no 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 don't <laughs> dream about that <laughs> you can get a, a visit visa god <laughs> 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 sick but that's what i'm trying to understand because it's the same with with let's say pakistan it's the same with i would say indonesia when we look at muslim countries as overall globally the only c- muslim countries who've done well are the ones with oil money do you think that is primarily because of the fact that we lost that sort of glory after the ottoman empire and then we were sort of, sort of unable to ever bounce back mm. i mean i know it's a very very difficult question it's not it's not actually no how, okay. how do you define uh, an islamic country a country where predominantly the the population is muslim so i'm not i wouldn't say it 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 adheres to the values of religion because that's a very open open to you know <laughs> discussion uh, or or how 
the muslim countries have been behaving in the past 100 years but at least where primarily the majority population um considers themselves muslims okay yeah that's because that's uh, why we fall why we fell why there is some sort of a is there a there mosquito is a somewhere i think that yeah there is a <laughs> i'm being attacked <laughs> <laughs> is that the government uh <laughs> <laughs> that's why okay. we fell because uh, we considered being a muslim is just by birth right we consider the glory of islam is just because we were muslims yeah that's not yeah because before it was desert very basic territory okay rich tribes and everything but nothing even close to glory yeah no education no nothing. no productivity <laughs> no civilization yeah when they started to follow the values of islam yeah which are the western are following right now yeah absolutely right then we we reached our peak we reached our glory yeah this and was the time when sort of baghdad was uh the burnt. whole region exactly. the whole hijaz yeah. the whole hijaz uh it was mixed between tribes uh, villagers farmers all one all muslims no borders nothing if there was a muslim in south america he's us right that is that is our uh, nationalism you can say yeah and uh, that's why we rose and the, the fact that people starting like okay no now we are muslims uh, it means we are on the top that's it it's enough to be named a muslim yeah so it's at the arrogance that destroyed exactly. them it's it the is the arrogance and then the politics that followed where you know the iran and saudi yes, and you exactly. know every country wanting to be the, yes. the head of the family mm-hmm. you know it's what happened with the jews yeah. uh, before islam this is exactly what happened to the jews like they were the chosen people by allah right and when did they got too arrogant that oh we are the chosen ones now we can do whatever we want they fell right and they know that they know that and uh, they want to reclaim their position this is the whole uh, uh, what you can th- their core agenda to reclaim this position right they were in the quran it's mentioned that they were the chosen people and then they were punished right done that's it uh this is what happened with us and uh, i hope i really hope that muslims will finally understand that Islam is not about what you wear it's not about the beard it's not about those things it's about values yeah being good to yourself being good to your neighbor being good to the nation yeah to the nation not to the border yeah exactly <laughs> that's how we rise again yeah and that's that's a very powerful thing to say because i feel like that's this sort of value you'll find all across europe Yes. And they they took out, and 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 if you look at uh, Europeans when they sort of in started invading or or the British Empire for, for that matter mm. they were actually this very you know warrior nation while while they were you know fighting their way through the entire world you know the the Ottomans or the Mughals in uh, subcontinent they were building you know mausoleums and yes. all of those things and they were invested in art and culture and a lot of the mm-hmm. you know global GDP was controlled by the you know Muslim countries yes So it's not like they were ahead of us all throughout history. Oh no. No no this is very recent. Yeah. Very recent. It's only after the World War 2. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, uh, let's say 100 years. Yeah. It's the reason of the World War 1 and 2. Yeah. And uh, they did what they do and they separated us, gave us borders. Right now forget your history, forget about your religion. and fight for these borders. Yeah, it's a divide and rule, right? Exactly. Divide and rule. Yeah. And I say I feel like I was just watching this uh you know Azerbaijan and Armenia conflict yesterday yeah. and I saw that it's all because of a gas pipeline. You know, Armenia really is being supported by Russia and then Azerbaijan is supported by the the West and Israel because they're providing an alternate source to the gas uh, mm-hmm. to to Europe for from Central Asia. 
Yep. Um, and it 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 fascinates me how you know we just what what people end up consuming. You know, it's all about nationalism. Oh, Azerbaijanis are this, yes. and Armenians are this. Uh-huh. And in the end, it's all happening because some companies are profiting. Resources. And if, you, resources, if, you look, right? if you look yeah. at it, it's always the small guys. Yeah. The big guys are sen- uh, sitting in the back and watching and like moving. You go there and you go there. Yeah. You suffer, you lose. I don't care. Yeah. All I want is my things. Yeah. And I will get them in the end. Yeah. Even if I have to kill you myself, I will do it. Yeah, one he button and you. <laughs> 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 I don't think I have a lot to offer you. <laughs> But yeah, I understand. And 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 do you think uh, most recently we've seen uh, the Turkish prime president? I think prime minister or president. I think it's the president. President. President Erdogan. Erdogan. Uh, he's been talking a lot about uh, reviving the Muslim world, and he's been talking a lot about how, and they've, you know, with with the with the TV show Arthurul, and they've try they've been trying to revive the idea of the Ottoman Empire, and I think that the Treaty of Versailles sort of uh, expires in 2023 as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're sort of now positioning themselves uh, to create sort of a modern uh, technocratic Muslim union of sorts, I would say. Um, you know something long modeled along the lines of European Union, where people can yes be independent, but sort of can work together in a singular vision. Yeah. Do you find that hopeful? Well, uh, for me, look, uh, I don't care about his uh, politics, ways, thinking, and anything. But what he has done for Turkey in the past fifteen, ten, ten, ten fifteen years. years, yeah, no one ever have done that. To their countries, and you do you genuinely think Turkey has changed in the past fifteen years since Sir Erdogan has come to power? I Even I if we both said no, <laughs> you can just search it on internet. Yeah, I mean, we search it on the internet, and I feel like, uh, unfortunately, people have a very small sort of memory, right? And. Yes. <laughs> um, they, 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 even when you're looking at things on the internet, it doesn't seem like oh, you know, Erdogan made Turkey, but what does that even truly mean? <laughs> unless, it, unless it's someone who's closer to that region, or maybe you know, because Syria borders it. Yes, and you guys yeah. probably interact with a lot of Turkish people from there, so you've probably sort of experienced firsthand communication of how Turkey was back in let's say early 2000s, and then how Turkey is today. Um, when they're talking about the fifth generation, you know, aircraft and the electric cars and Even in mm-hmm. Pakistan, you know, the best tiles are from Turkey, the best furniture is from Turkey, and that sort of really makes me, that makes me proud because it's not the oil that we're buying because the oil is is something that God gave us. Yes. Yeah. But the furniture is something that again something that God gave us. It's <laughs> the brain, but it's something that where where human beings are actually putting in some sort of an effort. Um. So I feel like if he can do that with Turkey. Maybe because the last time we were talking about a Muslim union with Gaddafi and uh, and you know King Faisal and 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 Bhutto in Pakistan, uh-huh. you can see all three of them <laughs> died in mysterious <laughs> circumstances, right? <Ooh. laughs> so, so do you think we can actually now begin to imagine potentially creating sort of a a union of sorts, or do you think we're too divided to do that now? Too divided. Too divided. You're not too, hopeful. Uh, too divided and too owned. We are owned. Unfortunately, that is true. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure what what it will take to change that, but we are owned. And uh, even though, let's say, okay, let's say that that Erdogan wants to unite the the whole region under the Ottoman yeah. rule, like what they did back then. They did not develop Syria when it was under the Ottoman Empire, right? At all, at all. Uh, histories, histories there. People are there, and uh, you can still find people who who have history under the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, it wasn't a good experience for Syrians. Uh, although, as uh, as a government or as an uh, as an empire. The Ottoman Empire was great, yeah, really, really, really great, very powerful. Uh, but they were using extra land, extra like more. Uh, they were increasing the army from from those. Uh, uh, what do you call them? Like the the countries who colonial were, uh, states, sort of mm, some kind like that. Yeah, uh, 
they were using them using the resources using their uh, um, like uh, manpower yeah to build the ottoman empire right not really sure if it was if that was wrong if uh, again we are talking in borders we are talking like syria turkey we shouldn't yeah. talk like that um, if we were all building a muslim empire that is there is no wrong in that yeah but uh, but then fact th- remains right at the end of the day that the facts. south the more south you went the more less developed it was at the time yes yeah. um and i feel like so that's why i said you know i don't see the um, the country sort of mixing together that that does that's not a modern day idea mm-hmm. right to sort of join borders and create a single country but i do feel like maybe if we sort of create a u- union uh, along the lines of you know let's say european union like a european yeah. yeah you know if i can just without a visa go to iran and then travel from there to turkey and then to syria mm-hmm. or wherever and you know all the way extending from pakistan all the way down to let's say you know turkey and all the way down to yes. africa i think that'd be a great thing and we, if we could have a single currency and we could you know distribute our manpower man that's everyone's dream that's the dream right match yeah. defense pact yeah i mean uh, how easy is that seriously yeah. uh, is it really hard yeah <laughs> well, you know i mean hard? 10 there are 15 f- uh, what 15 20 states and we have a single nuclear bomb if we had a union right would every country need to be- build their own bomb they don't we don't need bombs <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true but even i mean what i'm what i'm trying to say is that in terms of innovation you know turkey's t- where turkey is today we can use that innovation and be creating those sort of furnitures and you know construction mm-hmm. material and all sorts of things all across the the union but unfortunately we have this sort of a mentality where we don't trust our fellow muslim neighbor as much as we trust the europeans <laughs> well the thing is look the 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 price we are going to pay to to build our own uh muslim national it's very like very low but not everyone is willing to pay that price yeah start with yourself build yourself and that's it build the power build the glory former lost glory and then maybe we can hope to if you start it from yourself change yeah. yourself to be a good human yeah you will be good for your neighbors your neighbors will spread this goodness yeah but uh, right now like you can see some people they don't talk to their neighbors yeah as if they don't exist uh relatives brothers sisters like we lost this connection yeah if i love for myself something good where is the harm of giving this thing to uh, to my brother yeah I will m- build myself and he will build himself. In the end we will build our neighborhood then the city after that the whole country. Yeah. It's sort of like a bottom up approach instead of a top down, you know, fix the country and then we'll fix ourselves. It's, if you that can just fix yourself, happen. yeah, that will never that happen. Will never <laughs> happen. <laughs> yeah. But this is an interesting conversation and very enlightening to be honest. Um thank you so much for you guys for being here. Well, thank you for yeah. keeping us here. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the Syrian guys opens in F7. It's uh, still called the Syrian guys. The Syrian guys. All right. So Syrian guys opens in F7. This is right behind, right below Jesse's. Um, we have Haytham and Hassam. Hassam uh, with us today. Um, we had a remarkable conversation. I hope you learned something from it. My name is Sayyid Mazmoun Lassan Zaidi. You were watching Thought Behind Things. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.